Cologne, Germany, Part 1, a Shiny Visions production. This morning, we are docked at Cologne, Germany, a key port along the Rhine River. I peered out of the windows of our cabin to see what adventure awaited us. The view from our window looked lovely, yet somewhat ominous. Across the dark waters of the Rhine River on this overcast day, was the majestic and towering silhouette of the Cologne Cathedral. Its dark stone spires and towers stretching skyward gave off a magnificent yet foreboding appearance. Wherever you looked across the Rhine, your eyes always returned to that regal and imposing structure in the distance. Today, we looked forward to exploring Cologne Cathedral along with the rest of this fascinating city. Cologne is a key European inland port and is the historic, cultural, and economic capital of the Rhineland. This city is intersected by one of the major land routes for trade between Western and Eastern Europe. That, along with the commerce from the Rhine River, made Cologne a key commercial city. It is also a major cultural center for the area, with more than 30 museums and hundreds of galleries. We first crossed the Rhine River using the Hohenzollern Bridge, also called Cologne's Lovelock Bridge. These are equestrian statues of Friedrich and Kaiser Wilhelm on the north and south sides of the bridge. Around 2008, padlocks began appearing on this overpass as symbols of everlasting love. Couples secured padlocks onto the bridge, then dropped the keys into the river below to demonstrate the permanence of their bond. Since the start of this tradition, the number of locks placed on this bridge has increased exponentially, and today it is estimated that over 340,000 locks are attached not only to this bridge, but nearby fences, gates, and other similar public structures as well. Where does this custom of attaching locks come from? Perhaps it began in Italy. At one time, graduating students from Florence removed padlocks from their university lockers and secured them onto a nearby bridge. It was a permanent declaration to the world that they had completed their studies. Later, couples continued this custom to symbolize their enduring love. However, this romantic practice does not come without drawbacks. There are places where love locks are no longer welcome and even regarded as vandalism. Bridges were not designed to support the added weight of thousands of padlocks, which can threaten the integrity and therefore the safety of the structure. In September of 2014, about one million padlocks, weighing a whopping 45 tons, were removed from the Pont des Arts bridge in Paris after part of the bridge's railing failed from the excess weight. Fortunately for us at Cologne, these love locks are promoted here and are huge tourist attractions. They are indeed a sight to behold. The Cologne fish market area dates back to 1200 AD and the Church of St. Martin serves as the backdrop to these brightly colored houses. They date back to the 12th century, when they were likely constructed as part of the adjacent Benedictine Abbey. During World War II, much of the city was destroyed from bombing, including 90% of the old town and fish market. Following the war, there was painstaking restoration to original designs throughout the city. The Chocolate Museum. No, we didn't purchase tickets to get into this very popular attraction, which were pricey. But instead, 
We happily toured the adjoining gift shop, filled with colorful chocolate and candy confections of all types. We of course had to purchase something here, but this had to be an informed decision. So, we carefully perused all the shelves, counters, and displays, examining each sumptuous and colorful bonbon, cupcake, macaron, and iced slices of baked deliciousness. We finally settled upon these four little extravagant treats, and we savored each and every bite. Afterwards, we climbed up to the outside terrace overlooking the river and enjoyed the views. We walked past high-end shops displaying their expensive wares. We finally found a shop selling the original perfume. Centuries ago, cities reeked of filth. Nearby rivers ran thick with refuge from homes and factories. Flooding rivers washed decaying bodies out of shallow graves, flushing them into the putrid river waters as well. No one wanted to live next to the foul-smelling rivers. People emptied chamber pots directly out of their windows onto the sidewalks below adding to the piles of fly-hovered animal waste already there. Also, the general population did not bathe but once a year. This abhorrent lack of sanitation often made smells unbearable. That's why perfume was invented, not for making people smell attractive, but to make breathing in their surroundings more tolerable. For the ones who could afford such an extravagance, people doused handkerchiefs with perfume and placed them under their noses as they passed by rank smelling areas. The famous Eau de Cologne was invented here in 1709. Literally translated, it is water of cologne in honor of the inventor's hometown, Cologne, Germany. It contained alcohol, citrus oils, as well as oils of lavender, rosemary, thyme, orange leaf, jasmine, and tobacco. It reminded the inventor of an Italian spring morning, of mountain daffodils and orange blossoms after the rain. This light and flowery scent would indeed be a wonderful diversion while walking through the stench of the city. The most famous Eau de Cologne is called 4711, named after the location where it was created. At the time, it cost half the annual salary of a civil servant. I hope you have enjoyed this video of Cologne, Germany, Part 1. Stay tuned for part two coming soon. This is Shiny Visions.